Good morning, everyone. My name is Shruti Jain. I am part of uh, the marketing team of Elsevier India, and uh, I would like uh, to welcome all of you for today's session with Dr. Ravindranath on the concept of functional components of cranial nerves. We would like to thank you all for uh, taking time out to attend this master class. Uh, before we start today's session, there are some housekeeping rules which I would like to lay out before we actually get into the session. This session will be moderated by uh, myself and my colleague Kritika. Uh, so let me just lay out the housekeeping rules. The first thing is that all of you are on mute automatically. And if you want to ask any question or if there is any concern, please post your questions of concern in the Q&A tab exclusively. I repeat, please post your questions and concern only and only in Q&A tab because any, uh, if you will post anything in the chat section, that will not be acknowledged or addressed on a later date. Uh, we have an interesting uh, Q&A se session at the end of this uh, masterclass today, which Dr. Ravindranath will address uh, himself and we will try to answer as many questions as we can. The questions which by any chance are not answered in today's time frame, we will reach out to all those participants over an email with the answers to your questions. You can also expect very interesting polling time to time in this session. A poll will appear on your screen and you will be encouraged to participate. Uh, please try to participate as much as you can because all of these polls are anonymous and the result is only in the benefit of the discussion of the session. With this, I would like uh, also this uh, session is into the recording and a recorded version of today's masterclass will be circulated to everybody over an email after the conclusion of today's masterclass. With this, I would like to hand over this session to my colleague Kritika, who will introduce uh, today's topic and Dr. Ravindranath, and then uh, we will move, move into today's masterclass. Kritika, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Kritika Munga from the marketing division of Elsevier India. I would like to take an opportunity to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Ravindranath. He is currently working as an associate professor in the Department of Anatomy at Jipmer Puducherry. He is a qualified anatomist with a terminal doctorate degree in anatomy. He has been formally trained in the study of human anatomy at St. Jones Medical College, Bangalore. Also, he has an in-depth teaching experience of over 15 years with good interpersonal skills. Apart from this, he has many accolades to his uh, credit. He has received the Excellence in Anatomy Award 2018, Curis Remener Award at Simcon Foundation in association with World Organization of Family Doctors. He has around 32 publications in international and national peer-reviewed journals. Also, he has been the prime editor of the book Grey's Anatomy for Students, South Asia edition, to modify it according to the Indian medical curriculum with all recent elements in medical education published by Elsevier itself. I would like to welcome you all again and thank you for joining us today. Dr. Rabindranath, we are all looking forward to hear from you. Over to you, sir. Very good morning. So thank you, Kritika and uh, Shruti. Very kind of you to introduce me. And uh, I welcome you all to this topic of uh, functional components of uh, cranial nerves. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, being, lot of webinars today. Now, one more webinar to add to your list. No, it shouldn't be like that. So we are going to concentrate this topic in a different way, right? And the first question which comes to our mind is, why this topic of functional components of cranial nerves? The answer is, this topic of functional components of cranial nerves is important because as a first year student, most of us know we would have drawn a lot of, of pictures of different sections, placing a lot of dots inside it, right? And not knowing where to place each one of it. One should be placed medially, other laterally, not knowing the logic behind that. And, right, something like finally tense up, right? So that has happened, right? Currently happening also, right? And uh, because we know this crowd includes first year students, then students, uh, or doctors who have completed and appearing for competitive exam. So we'll try to concentrate on the essential aspects of it and we'll make it, try to make it more simple and more informative, trying to benefit both of us. So how we are going to do this topic is, we are going to do it under two parts. The first part, I'll be explaining you the principles of this functional components. 
the second part we'll be trying to solve together right the functional components of each of these nerves do i make it clear so two parts the first part i'll be explaining you the principle involved the second part we are going to solve it together the functional components of each of the nerves i told you why it is important right that is to understand the placement of the nuclei in different parts of brain stem number one number two to understand the train of syndromes right in a brain stem in fact how a motor nuclei involved when a sensory nuclei is going to be involved that will be the second part and the third part we try to understand right what is the application of this what we are trying to deal and furthermore this is going to give you an insight and interest right search for further right knowledge about neuroanatomy and neurosciences is that clear so that is why this topic was chosen now so moving on to the learning objectives of today's session by the end of this session you should be able to explain the different functional components list the function components of individual cranial nerves so it's very simple session right so try to be with me right the first half is very very important if you concentrate the first half the second half is just a play to solve a puzzle right so and you need to be together with me we will be discussing by of this polling questions right is that okay now so moving on to the introduction so you know it's a part of the sorry it's a part of the peripheral nerve system so 12 pass which connect the brain to the part of the head neck and trunk so that carry sensory or motor or a combination of both sensory and motor and function in parasympathetic nerve system and basically the name indicates their primary function and general distribution of their fibers now before i go on to the principle now let's try to look in the nerves right try to look in the nerves that is the cranial nerves so i hope you are able to see this uh, picture so that's the right the olfactory over there it's optic now it's optic chiasma and uh, what do you see right this will be the whole of the brain stem the ventral aspect of the brain stem with do you see the third nerve there right that's the third nerve here what do you see there's a slender fourth nerve this will be the pons right emerging out of pons is the fifth nerve right and here is the ponto medullary junction what do you see here right and this will be the sixth nerve seventh nerve and eighth nerve and here this will be the medulla so what you see here is an anterolateral sulcus and behind what you see is the posterolateral sulcus right in the posterolateral sulcus right so in the pontomedullary junction i said 6 7 8 here you get the 9 10 11th nerve in the posterolateral sulcus and in the anterolateral sulcus is the 12th nerve now why i tell you this is basically to understand the attachment of cranial nerves to different parts of brain stem so when you try to recollect it again so third and fourth nerve from mid brain right fifth nerve from pons what do you see there sixth nerve from right 6 7 8 that's what i told you from ponto medullary junction 9 10 11 and from posterolateral sulcus of medulla and 12th nerve from the anterolateral sulcus of medulla now why i tell you this attachment because once you know the emergence of the cranial nerve from the brain stem you will have a basic idea of where the nuclei is located broadly if not very precisely do i make it clear see this might be very simple because we know where the third nerve comes out but when you go for a competitive exam after 5 years if you ask the third nerve nuclei where it can be located then somewhere in the brain stem that's how we'll be able to look at so to beat that up so try to understand the basics so once you come to know the emergence of this cranial nerve from different parts of brain stem you can arbitrarily come to a conclusion where the cranial nerve nuclei can be placed right now so that's a blown up picture of what you see there so you see the optic nerve optic chiasma right the same thing i told you the brain stem right with the nerves emerging out now 
So before we proceed further, let's have a, the first polling question. I think Shruti, if you can post the first polling question to see. Uh, it is on your screen, everyone. Please try to so answer the question. We'll have around 15 seconds to answer this. Okay. Uh, the poll will end in next five seconds. I can extend another five, 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 okay. five more seconds. Let's see. <laughs> no it's problem, first sir. question. First question for them to get used to the system. Okay. All right. Sir, I think we should end the poll now. We have uh, okay. given everyone fine. 30 seconds of time. I would okay, now great. like to end the polling and share the result of this polling today. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here are the results, sir. Okay, good. So, so we have 10 pairs, 43 percent, 13 pairs, 51 percent, 14 pairs, 5 percent, 15 pairs, 0 percent. Okay, one choice was untouched. Okay, good. So, everybody was, or at least 80 percent was looking up for 12 pairs. You agree with me, right? So, that is supposed to be, but I want to tell you something extra in this. Is there a 13th cranial now, or is there a 14th cranial now? Yes. So there exists a 13th cranial now. So what is the 13th cranial now? That is nothing but what is called as nervous terminalis. That is what is called as the 13th cranial now. And so that goes the 51% if they are aware. Okay. And is there a cranial now 14? One more question. Is there a cranial now 14? The, as per the question, definitely you will say yes. Because the question is like that, right? So yes, if there is a cranial nerve 14, what is the cranial nerve 14? The cranial nerve 14 is nothing but the nervous intermediates or the nerve of Risberg, right? You get it? So there is a cranial nerve 13, right? This 13 is nothing but nervous terminalis. It is also referred as cranial nerve 0. I will now right? stop sharing the results. Yeah. Yes, sir. Move on. So there is a cranial of 13. So this 13 is nothing but nervous terminalis. And there is a cranial of 14 also, which is nothing but nervous intermediates or nerve of Resberg, right? Okay, so this doesn't change the existence of 12 pairs. But in addition, I wanted to explain you, if somebody asks you, does there exist a cranial of 13 or 14, you should not be hearing that first time. So that is why I've introduced you to this, right? So is that clear? Now, let's go on to the right principles of this uh, functional components so as i told you we'll uh, go with the slowly with the basics and try to uh, build upon now before going on to that so that's a uh, you should note on terminologies which you should be very familiar with few terminologies number one right An efferent, right? So, what is an efferent? So, efferent is mainly motor, right? And afferent, right? Mainly sensory, right? When I started with the introduction, I told you a cranial nerve can be a sensory only or a motor or a mixer. So, try to understand. So, it can be, right? So, it can be an efferent right or it can be a offerant right the terminology which you need to understand first then number two right this sensation offerant or efferent can be from two sources one that is it can be from visceral we call it visceral or it can be from the body. You call it as somatic, right? You get it? So it can be visceral, right? Or it can be somatic. You get it, right? So visceral is from viscera, from internal organs. Somatic refers to the body wall. Is that clear? Now, again, further proceeding on. Now this visceral and somatic, again, can be a general sensation or it can be a special. Right? 
You understand? It can be a general, right? Okay, or a special. You understand? So general sensation when I say it means this pain, touch, temperature, etc. Special sensation includes taste, smell, right? Vision, audition. So all those are special sensations. So I repeat again, right? To understand. So you know, efferent is motor, efferent is sensory, right? Visceral refers to right the viscera, the internal organ. Somatic refers to the body wall. General refers to general sensation, and right special refers to the special sensation. So this terminology, the basic terminologies, are very very important. Is that clear? Now once you are aware of these terminologies, now right. Let's proceed in a different way. Look at this. So I said. There is your cranial now, right? So it can be right an efferent or an afferent. I told you, right? Now this efferent or an afferent can be sensing from where? It can be from somatic or visceral, right? Somatic or visceral. Do you agree? Yes. Now this somatic or visceral again. Can be what? It can be from general or special, right? General sensation or special, right? It, again, a friend can be general or special. So it can be general or special. Is that clear? Right? What I told you now. So a combination of this is what you are going to see as the functional components. That is, you are going to have. Seven components, right? Okay. That is, I'll tell you the components a little later, right? Just try to understand the terminologies now. So, different and different, right? Then somatic and visceral, okay? Then general and special. Is that clear? Right? Now we are going to club all this, like for example, right? Somatic efferent or general, right? General somatic efferent. You see that? So general somatic efferent. Okay. So right, special visceral efferent. So like that, like that, we proceed on. We get seven components. You understand the basics. So this part is very very critical, right? Once you understand this, the rest of the part is going to be very easy. Okay, now, so to go further, we need to understand right about the development of this nerve system in brief, so that how these are formed. Now you know the whole of the nerve system is derived from the neural tube, right, which is from the neuroectoderm, right. So looking at the new to right in an unfolded state look at this is the right that's the neural tube in an unfolded state okay that's one half of the neural tube right and here is your midline one half of the neural tube with the right here is the midline okay so this is an unfolded neural tube right from the which has two parts one which is close to the midline this is the midline you call it as the basal lamina other away from the midline so this one i call it as lr lamina you can call it as lr plate or basal plate you get it right one which is close to the midline you call it as basal plate the other which is away from the midline you call it as right the lr lamina or lr plate is that clear right so basal lamina and lr lamina now separating this Basal lamina and LR lamina. You see a sulcus which you see in the floor of the fourth ventricle. That is referred as the sulcus limitans or the limiting sulcus. Is that clear? The sulcus limitans or the limiting sulcus. Now, why I tell you this basal lamina and LR lamina? That is important. Now look at this. So basal lamina is close to the midline and LR lamina is away from the midline. You can call it as LR plate. And also basal plate. Now, this basal lamina will give rise to the motor nuclei, or in other words, I call it as efferent column, right? 
ఈ ఫ్రంట్ కాలం వన్ టూ అండ్ త్రీ త్రీ ఈ ఫ్రంట్ కాలం రైట్ ద మోటార్ న్యూక్లియా ఓకే ద గ్రీన్ న్యూక్లియా రైట్ నౌ ద ఎల్ఆర్ లామినా రైట్ విల్ గివ్ రైస్ టు ద ఫ్రంట్ కాంపనెంట్ ఆర్ ద సెన్సరీ న్యూక్లియా కాంపనెంట్ ఇస్ దట్ యా రైట్ సో ఐ సే the basal lamina will give rise to motor nuclei and the lr lamina will give rise to the sensory nuclei is that okay right do you agree with me now so now the motor nuclei right the efferent column will be placed close to the midline or away from the midline so it will be definitely placed close to the midline and the sensory nuclei component will be placed away from the midline so this arrangement is maintained in the brain stem right so that is what is important now let us move on to the components right so i told you right that is how do you derive the components right so that is understand what is efferent what is afferent what is visceral what is somatic what is general and what is special right so first component that is somatic efferent or you can call it as general somatic efferent i tell you somatic efferent or general somatic efferent then special visceral efferent right special visceral efferent then what comes next you know definitely seeing the map which we have done right so it goes as general visceral efferent right so the three right efferent columns agree then moving on to the right the sensory component that is general visceral afferent special visceral afferent right you see the chart which we have done first right then you can try to derive this by yourself so what is left over is other two can you tell me from the chart what we have done other two right so it's going to be general yes somatic afferent and the last one that's going to be what special somatic afferent is that clear right so one more principle i want to tell you the first principle what i told you is the motor nuclei are placed close to the midline that is from basal lamina the sensory nuclei are away from the midline that is from lr lamina is that clear and the other one look at this around the sulcus limitants we have the visceral component right on either side do you see that around the sulcus limitant is what you see in the floor of the fourth ventricle right so you see the visceral component which is right adjacent to the sulcus limitants these two principles you try to understand right now so having derived the seven components you need to know what is the function of this right only when you understand what is the function of each of this component right it will be clear otherwise you will be just mugging out as gsa right ssa ssv etc right now let's look in what is the function of this each of this component right that is okay let's look at when i say it is somatic efferent column right somatic efferent column or general somatic efferent column the function of that is it is going to supply the somatic striated muscles or i can just simply call it as it is going to supply the skeletal muscles of the body derived from myotomes is that clear somatic efferent means it is going to supply all the right that is the skeletal muscles derived from the somatic striated muscles derived from the myotomes now when i say special right when i say special visceral efferent right i'm going slow for you to understand right try to be with me so the second part it can be easy once you know the first part it is something special it is an efferent so it is motor right so the so special that it is going to supply the branchial arch derived muscles right that is why it is also called as branchial efferent right because it is going to supply the branchial arch or the pharyngeal arch derived muscles so you know what is the derivatives of each arch no of the arch muscle of the arch etc right definitely right everybody would have gone through that right 
so branchial arteriotic muscles now going on right for the last component i told you that is general visceral efferent so we have seen first component supplying only skeletal muscles the second component supplying the branchial arteriotic muscles the third component that is going to supply the smooth muscles right and glands okay that is general visceral efferent that is going to supply the smooth muscle and glands is that clear do i make it clear yes so three columns only right general visceral efferent sorry general somatic efferent or somatic efferent special visceral efferent right and general visceral efferent right so one is going to supply the skeletal muscles there is going to supply the branchial arteriotic muscles and the third component that is for the smooth muscles and the glands now we want the afferent right afferent component so look at this general visceral afferent so that is so you can call it as so general sensations from where viscera right definitely you can understand it is from viscera you get it now special visceral afferent right when you say special visceral afferent right you can say it is like special sensation right so it's an afferent example like the taste right taste some try to include smell also right smell also right i think that's a discrepancy now next one general somatic afferent you know afferent is sensory soma refers to what body right okay and general refers to what general sensations from the body so that includes what pain touch temperature right do i make it clear so pain touch and temperature now the last component that is special somatic afferent so that includes right hearing balance right vision right you understand i repeat again the afferent column try to be with me very important so general sensation from the viscera that is gba special visceral afferent that is for taste right general somatic afferent pain touch and temperature because it is an afferent so try to understand so it is sensory somatic so it is from the body and general sensation so you know that is pain touch temperature etc and special somatic afferent that is for hearing balance and vision so two principles involved the motor nuclei are placed close to the midline sensory nuclei are placed away from the midline the visceral nuclei are around the sulcus limitans why this i repeat because when you draw a section right you will try to understand right you will place the hypoglossal nucleus in a section of medulla at inferior olivar nucleus close to the midline right you will draw the vestibular and cochlear nuclei away right we'll come to that later right this principle is very very important is that clear i'm going slow for you to understand once you get this the second part is going to be very easy okay now now what we need to look at is we need to look at what are the cranial nerve nuclei which will fall under each of this components that is which are the cranial nerve nuclei which will supply only skeletal muscles which are the nuclei which will supply the branchial arteriotic muscles right is it clear okay now so i proceed okay now so i'll just make very schematic for you to understand so here is your right one half of the brain stem we'll try to make it okay and uh, okay so what i want to tell you is just this will be the part of the right so i'll put in all the components so what are the components if you can write with me you can try to understand that is somatic efferent correct then what is the next one yes special right visceral efferent you agree with me right then general visceral efferent correct the three efferent column then go on to the afferent so what i told you afferent is general visceral afferent and i put it together right 
because they share a common nuclei, right? Spatial, visceral, afferent. Then general, somatic, afferent. And the last one, what is the last one? Special, somatic, afferent. Right, you get it? Right? Am I clear for you? Right? So we have a somatic, right? Efferent column. Okay, so I just try to segregate that for you to understand. Okay. So that is to give you the partition between the nuclei. Okay, this is going to share a common new, right? I told you, and uh, this one, right? I'll try to make it more. Uh, now, so this will be the region of the okay, the region of the midbrain, okay, the region of the pons, okay, uh, and the region of the medulla. Right. So what we are going to look at is we are going to look at what are the cranial nuclei which is going to supply or just going to fall under each of these categories. Right. Each of these categories. So try to be with me. So I told you what is the right function of the first component I told you that is somatic efferent. So what does it supply or what is the function it is going to right supply the somatic striated muscles or the skeletal muscles of the body. So what are the cranial nuclei which will supply the somatic striated muscles? So under this category, right, what comes is the third nerve nuclei. Okay, then we have the fourth nerve nuclei, right, third nerve and fourth nerve, right, so you know what is third nerve, what is fourth nerve, right, now and look at where I place it. The motor nucleus of fifth nerve, right? I put it as motor nucleus of fifth nerve, right? Agree? Do you agree with me? Yes or no? Do, are you, do you follow me? Definitely it is not fifth nerve, right? That is why I'm asking you whether do you follow me or not. So it is not fifth nerve because you know what is fifth nerve. Yes? So fifth nerve is derived from which arch? First start. So does it come under this column? No. So it is not fifth, right? So be with me, right? Be with me. So it is sixth now, definitely, right? Yes. And the last one, the twelfth now, right? So third now nuclei, fourth now nuclei, sixth now nuclei, and twelfth now. So that is going to supply the skeletal muscles, right? of the body, right, which are derived from the myotomes. Third nerve nuclei, motor nucleus of third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve, and twelfth nerve. So three, four, six. This is going to supply Now comes your fifth now, right? Fifth now, right? Seventh now, agree? Then, right, there is a common nucleus for, right? Nine, ten, right? Eleven. So you call it as nucleus ambiguous, right? You call it as nucleus ambiguous. Now try to understand where you place it, right? This nuclei that is important nucleus ambiguous is that clear now general visual efferent right general visual efferent i told you what it is going to supply right one is skeletal muscle is done branchial derived muscle is done now this is going to supply the smooth muscle and glands so what nuclei we have we have the edinger vespal nucleus right edinger vespal nucleus then what we have we have the lacrimate nucleus and the salivate nucleus, right, and one nucleus in the medulla, right, for the vagus now, 
you call it as dorsal nucleus of vagus right dorsal nucleus of vagus is that clear right so adding your spawn nucleus lacrimate nucleus salivate nucleus that includes both the salivate superior salivate and inferior salivate nucleus and in the middle we have dorsal nucleus of vagus now look at this general visual afferent and spatial visual afferent they share a common nuclei right general visual afferent and spatial visual afferent share a common nuclei look at this i place it in the medulla this often you would have heard it right okay that is for seventh now ninth now and tenth now that is nothing but n t s so nucleus tractus solitaris right nucleus tractus solitaris okay now and that is for both right that is it has a special component right as special component also and it has a general component also now general somatic afferent right so again what we have we have the fifth nerve right that is the fifth nerve which is right the sensory nucleus of fifth nerve right the sensory nucleus of fifth nerve try to understand this this is the sensory nucleus okay and uh, it is uh, right extending so why are extended now now before i proceed let me ask you how do you imagine a nucleus as come on how do you imagine a nucleus as so most of us imagine a nucleus as a dot and the thread attached to the dot and something comes out the thread comes out of the brain stem so that's a simple understanding right do you agree with me yes no try try to imagine in a still more better way right a, a nucleus is a three dimensional structure a three dimensional structure so it has a cranial caudal extent and an antero posterior extent extending right so this nucleus for example right when you look at carefully it is extending to midbrain pons and extending into the medulla that is why i told you a nucleus is a three dimensional structure right i mean a cranio caudal extent is that clear so the part of the nucleus right in the midbrain i call it as mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal i repeat and the part of it in the pons i call it as a main sensory nucleus the part of it in the medulla i call it as right the spinal nucleus right the spinal nucleus of trigeminal okay so i repeat right this is very important i am going slow try to understand so mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal main sensory nucleus and spinal nucleus of trigeminal right now this mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal is concerned with proprioceptive information right what is the proprioception main sensory nucleus is for discriminative touch right spinal nucleus is for pain temperature you get it i repeat okay mesencephalic nucleus is for proprioceptive sensations main sensory nucleus is for discriminative touch and spinal nucleus is for pain and temperature now going to the last component right last component what i told you that is spatial somatic afferent that is for what hearing balance and vision when i say hearing balance vision so concerned with right hearing and balance we have two nuclei right the vestibular nucleus right and the cochlear nucleus right the vestibular nucleus and the cochlear nucleus is that clear right the vestibular nucleus and cochlear nucleus okay now i repeat again try to understand right this will be the general somatic efferent so this is going to right supply the somatic striate and muscles so third nerve nucleus that is called as oculomotor nucleus complex it is to be more specific okay fourth nerve nucleus sixth nerve nucleus and twelfth nerve nucleus right now special visual efferent it is also referred as what branchial efferent right you get it now so under that we have motor nucleus of trigeminal right okay because here is your sensory nucleus of trigeminal right you get it that's why i discriminate that now seventh nerve nucleus and right for 9 and 11 you have the nucleus ambiguous so general visual efferent so it is for glands and smooth muscles they are the ettinger spall lacrimatory and salivatory nucleus dorsal nucleus of vagus 
Now, these two afferent columns share a common nucleus, that is nucleus tractus solitaris, which is for 7th nerve, 9th nerve, and 10th nerve. Now, general somatic efferent, we have the sensory nucleus of trigeminal, which has three components, a mesencephalic nucleus, a main sensory nucleus, and spinal nucleus, extending into the medulla. And we have the vestibular nucleus and right, the cochlear nucleus, the last component, that is special somatic efferent. Now, this chart, what we have made or formulated is very important. Why? Because, right, even if you don't know the different sections of brainstem, with this, you should be able to come to a conclusion, right? You should be able to come to a conclusion. That is, what are the nuclei, right, you will come across when you take a section of midbrain. Can you see the chart and tell me, yes, midbrain? So again, follow the rule that is medial to lateral. So third nerve, fourth nerve, heading your spawn nucleus, and what is this? Mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal will come across in a section of midbrain. Okay. Now, when you take a section of pons, the nuclei which will come across are sixth nerve nucleus, fifth nerve, seventh nerve, lacrimate nucleus, salivate nucleus, and the main sensory nucleus of trigeminal. When you take a section of medulla, Right, definitely you would have run this section of medulla at Oliver nucleus, right, with a lot of dots placed. So see the arrangement. So it will be hypoglossal nucleus, nucleus ambiguous, dorsal nucleus of vagus, nucleus tractus solitaris, spinal nucleus of right trigeminal, the vestibular and cochlear nucleus. Why it is placed in that order? You know the understanding now because the motor nucleus are placed close to the midline. Sensor nuclei are placed away from the midline, right? So this can be questioned as a different way, right? So the NTS is located in midbrain, pons, or medulla. So you can definitely say that it's in the medulla, right? Okay, nucleus ambiguous is located in midbrain, pons, or medulla. Those can be a simple question, but once you complete all the 20 or 17 subjects, now that is going to be a little tougher, right? That is why I'm concentrating on the basics so that you will not be able to, right, forget at any point of time. Is that clear? So dorsal nucleus of vagus located in medulla, right? Is that clear? Okay. Now, so understanding this, going on to the second part, when you come to a, right? When you come, okay. Now, try to understand when you go for the cranial nerve syndromes. When you say you about cranial nerve syndromes, right? You need to Right, if it is a medial medullary syndrome or a lateral medullary syndrome, which part of the medulla is going to be affected? So it is lateral part of medulla. So there is going to be a motor nucleus involvement or a sensor nucleus involvement. It is going to be in the lateral medullary syndrome, you will have more of sensory nucleus involvement because sensor nuclei are placed right more laterally. Okay. Now look at the if it is a medial medullary syndrome, right? What do you come across? You get more of what? Right? Motor nucleus involvement, right? So motor that is hypoglossal nucleus will be definitely involved is that clear now with this basic idea right with this basic idea we'll try to right proceed on to solve the components right we'll to solve the components okay now this is what we have seen try to look at it the seven components right i have done all this and i don't want to repeat because we have finished with all these components and the nucleus involved right okay now straight we go on to the second part right now look at this so try to solve it. So olfactory nerve and optic nerve. So what component, right, does it fall under, right? It falls under special somatic afferent, right? Special somatic afferent. So which is olfactory is for olfaction. Optic is for the vision, right? Optic is for the vision, right? Now, understanding this, let us try to solve, right? What are the components of each of these nerves, right? What are the components of each of this nerves. Okay. I think uh, if uh, Kritika is there, we can uh, hold them the second question. Absolutely, so, sir. I will just launch the second question here. So yeah. um, yeah. everyone, we are going to, uh, uh, you know, throw open second poll question for all of you to answer and it is on your screen right now. Please try to answer this question. We have about 30 seconds of time. Yeah. 
yes i think they would have solved by now yes uh, being the chart okay so uh, uh, sh- i'll i'll just end the polling and share the results we've already got almost 60% answering the question okay great all right uh, so here are the results yeah so it is right in front of your screen okay so it is around 53% let's see how we are how we have solved right then remove the results now okay now how we have solved this right i'll tell you how we have solved this either first step you would have looked in where or there is number 3 include that no it should not be solved that way right okay the second part i'll be going a little faster for you to keep up with me that is when i say it is that when i say and now you should be very clear whether the now is going to supply skeletal muscle or not whether it is going to supply branchial efferent or not whether it is going to supply any glands and smooth muscles or not whether it is going to have any general or special sensation then whether it is going to carry any pain and temperature or whether it has a special somatic apparent problem so look at all this don't look at where there is number 3 or 4 or depending upon the now now definitely you would have included number 3 yes or no you agree yes now what is that next you have included is what general visceral efferent that is what nucleus edinger westphal nucleus right so edinger westphal nucleus so what does it supply right i said smooth muscle and glands so what smooth muscle so sphincter cupulae and ciliaris right through what ganglion ciliary ganglion right you get it so only two components right only two components hope you are able to understand that right so we get back to the slide right can close the screen right okay so it has two components do you agree with me somatic efferent and general visceral efferent right you know the nucleus where it is placed it is placed in midbrain at the level of superior colliculus right okay with two columns only so try to follow the picture here right we we'll spend 30 seconds on this picture right look at this we have the blue color and right the pink ones right the the pink one showing the efferent right where it is going to supply the muscles right and the blue one showing the right the smooth muscle and glands with through ciliary ganglion it is going to supply right the sphincter pupillae and the ciliaris right is that clear right you are able to get me right now let's go on to the next polling question yes let's flash the next one let's see yes shruti you are there yes i'm just launching the poll yes it's yes. right in front of your screen guys and you have exactly 30 seconds so as we proceed further we'll be able to pick up i hope you are with me right yeah we are, we are getting answer really fast this time <laughs> yeah i should be able to i am expecting 100% everybody should be able to get the right answer this time let's see how does it go yes i think we can wind up it uh, we just they... give them 3 more seconds okay fine <laughs> and right. here are the results okay yes yeah here, here are the results sir okay 70 percent right 70 percent right okay let's see how it goes why we are missing out rather than looking at the right part look at the fourth one right so what does it supply you know fourth now trochlear now right so you know the third now is going to supply all the extracellular muscles except so4 lr6 right all extracellular muscles except so4 lr6 right so now the fourth now nuclei right this one is going to supply which muscle only what muscle superior oblique does it supply any glands no does it supply any smooth muscle no does it supply any of these other components no right so it has only one component right only one component that is what that is somatic e efferent column right somatic efferent column because it supplies only the superior oblique muscle only right is that clear right okay now unlike third nerve which has a component to supply sphincter pupillae and ciliaris through edinger westphal nucleus through ciliary ganglion is that clear because all of the extracellular muscles supplied by third nerve that is acromotor nucleus complex so where is this fourth nerve located can you come right that is in midbrain do you agree what level it is it is a level of inferior colliculus right midbrain at the level of 
inferior colliculus. Look at, look at, yes. Now, right. Supposed to be the thinnest now, right? One more point. Supposed to be the thinnest now. This is many times asked in the neat examinations, right? The thinnest cranial now, right? Supposed to be the thinnest now, and only one component. What is that? Somatic efferent supplying there, the superior oblique, right? Okay. Now, look at it. Look at it, right? Look at the picture now. Look at the picture. The course of the fourth now, right? Yes, it's the fourth now. Having looked at the picture, one more point, definitely you will agree with me, the only cranial nerve to emerge on which aspect? Dorsal aspect, right? Only cranial nerve emerge on the dorsal aspect, right? See that it is going to supply only, right? The superior oblique muscle, right? The superior oblique muscle. So only one component. So it's the easiest question. So never make the mistake again, right? Okay, let's go on to the next, right? Let's flash the polling question. Yes, let's see now how, the, how it goes this time. Yes. Yes. We have to hold on your screen now. Yeah. Okay, your time starts now, yes. Be with me, yes. You're able to answer the question? Yes, sir. Yes. Come on. We have just 10 Let's more go. seconds left. Yeah, yeah, give them, give them time, right? Let's not hurry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, sir. Okay. Explanation part, we can make it a little faster because I explained the concepts which are involved. So I think they should be able to come out. Because the initial part, they should get trained to how they should think and get the answer, right? Okay, yes. I'll yeah. just share the results now. Okay, fine. So here okay. are the results. Okay. So let's look in. How did we land there? Okay, that is. Okay, look at the. Whiteboard now. Okay. Now fifth now. Fifth now is trigeminal now. You know definitely. Right? When I told you it has two components, I told you. Right? It has right a motor nucleus and a sensory nucleus. A motor nucleus and a sensory nucleus. The motor nucleus, look at where it is there. So here is the motor nucleus. So what column you want to include? Special visual efferent column. Do you agree with me? Yes. You should not have any doubt in this. You are solving, right, the polling question with this chart. Yes or no, right? Now, so you'll be able to get the, right, especially the leafrant column. Then, look at this, this I told you what, the sensory component of, right, the fifth now, right, that is it has three components I told you for proprioception, discriminative touch, and, right, pain and temperature from where, from all the three divisions, right? From all the three divisions, that is ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular, right? All the three divisions, ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular, right? So does it supply any glands and smooth muscles, right? Does it carry any special sensation? Is it included anywhere? Does it carry any, right? Special somatic afferent? Yes. Yes or no? No. So it has only two columns, right? So look at the motor nucleus. Where the motor nucleus is located? It is in the pons. Where is the sensor nucleus located? You can look in and tell me it is located, right? It is extending to midbrain, pons, and medulla, right? Is that clear? Now, let's go on to the point. Yes. Not able to see the four point. Where is it? So I think it's uh, at the bottom screen icon on your desktop. I can see the presentation. Okay. So just have to expand it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, trigeminal now, right? That's what you see there. So I told you the motor nucleus where in the pons, right? That is special visual efferent. The sensor nucleus where general somatic afferent column extending to midbrain. That is pons and medulla. Okay, that is spinal nucleus, right? In the medulla, midbrain mesencephalic nucleus. I told you it is for what proprioceptive sensations, right? Proprioception, for example, proprioception of 
temporomandibular joint with respect to this right okay it's supposed to be the largest cranial nerve the thinnest nerve largest nerve and the longest intracranial nerve these are frequently asked questions right frequently asked questions largest cranial nerve right and suppose it's a mixed nerve right okay so it has two components only that is general somatic efferent and special visceral efferent why efferent it is going to supply what muscles can you come yes so it is dead from branchial arch or not what muscles the muscles of mastication the tensor tympani tensor villi palatii right agree how look at the that is what is uh, mentioned here the muscles of mastication the masseter the pterygoids right okay the tensor tympani so this will be the right the other component i told you general somatic afferent which is going to carry what pain and pain touch temperature proprioception etc from various parts of the distribution of this ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular nerve okay now so look at the picture here so i just want to show you the nerve distribution look at this this is the motor nucleus of trigeminal follow the course which is yellow painted here and the blue one that is the afferent column right mesencephalic main sensory nucleus and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal the blue stained one you can see the ophthalmic maxillary and the mandibular distribution right so only two components see this component is one part which you cannot mug up for all the nerves right only if you understand you will be able to get it right so i come again let's try to solve for the abuse and now so there is a question on abuse and now yes let's see so let's see how does it go time starts yes. now yes so you do know now abuse and now what muscle it is going to supply right so it's a skeletal muscle or branchial arteriod muscle you know right now whether it supplies any glands smooth muscles etc you can be pretty sure definitely it's not going to be that difficult right obtusion nerve is a sixth nerve you know where is the distribution right whether it does it have any sensory component i don't think so yes come on yes i think the time so here are wrong. the here is the result okay great at least now it's improving to 85% right 85% okay so sixth nerve what does it supply yes six no what does it supply yes six no where is six no in the chart look at it so definitely right so six no is in the pons right it is in the pons agreed so what column somatic efferent or special sorry somatic efferent or general somatic efferent so it is going to supply what muscle lateral rectus exactly right lateral rectus muscle so it is not including any branchial efferent it will not supply glands and smooth muscles no no special right no general somatic efferent and no special somatic efferent right is it clear right so it supplies only right lateral rectus right only lateral rectus muscle is that clear so try to understand take each nerve and try to see whether it is going to supply each of this components the nuclear components or not right okay now go on to the right now there is your right six now look at it at the level of facial colliculus right so it comes in the somatic efferent column longest intracranial core this is what i told you so i told you the only cranial nerve to emerge in the dorsal aspect only cranial nerve right to have a longest intracranial cores largest cranial nerve right primarily motor right supply skeletal muscle so you know what is it supply i told you lateral rectus sixth nerve so look at it so here is your sixth nerve nucleus where is it it is in the pons right it is in the pons at the level of facial colliculus right to be more specific right i'm merging out of pontomandibular junction see the course of the nerve i'm not going much detail into that supplying the muscle what muscle does it supply it supplies lateral rectus muscle right it is going to supply lateral rectus muscle is that okay right now okay now go to the facial this is tricky right this is tricky okay you flash the polling question yes yes sir yes. here is the question okay. regarding facial nerve right
so that's the polling question for you to try to solve it now right try to solve it okay try to solve it yes this is what the question you are going to get for your competitive exams or so right not that they'll ask you about the abduction now and they'll ask you about the acclimator now right okay we have just 10 more seconds okay give them give them some more 10 more extra <laughs> okay no problem sir as you as you wish yeah. the last 10 seconds is going to be with with assistance for them so facial <laughs> now so you know it is going to supply right what muscles right so right it is going to I supply mean, just three more seconds for this poll muscle or not whether it supplies any special sensations taste uh, here are the results okay okay fine so good so let's see how they have reached that right let's see how they have reached that okay how okay so seventh now is right facial now you know that so what is it supply so look at the seventh now this is the seventh now nucleus so what nucleus i told you motor nucleus are seventh now located where in the pons so that you will not have any problem definitely you would have put special visual efferent correct or branchial efferent column you will just doubt with that i don't think so right because there is number 7 here specifically now so where is the doubt now the rest of things is a doubt yes or one more place where you can definitely would have put it as here there is number 7 so definitely you would have put this right okay whether you put both of this together or not that is the question right now let's try to solve so this is clear so it is going to supply the muscles of facial expression right the motor nucleus of patient now muscles of facial expression the posterior of digastric right stapedius the stylohyoid that right branchial arch derived muscles from second arch done now look at this component that is going to supply the glands and smooth muscles correct now here it is important if you know the parasympathetic secretomotor pathway for the glands then you will be able to solve this component right so we have four parasympathetic ganglion right that is ciliary ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion submandibular ganglion and aortic ganglion right aortic ganglion now what are the ganglions which are connected right okay structurally or functionally with the facial now and through what that is what you need to right so that is what you need to be clear right go back okay so that is Uh, okay let's take the facial now what gland does it supply any idea which gland does it uh, right supplies and through what now you would have heard about the parasympathetic path the secretomotor path that is right i right short that is parasympathetic secretomotor pathway to submandibular gland sublingual gland and other minor salivary glands this is through the ganglion what ganglion submandibular ganglion right agree through the facial now right so it is going to supply the submandibular and sublingual You understand correct and the next one is right it is going to supply look here is very important nasal gland pharyngeal gland lacrimal gland palatine gland nasal pharyngeal lacrimal palatine gland through pterygo palatine ganglion right through pterygo palatine ganglion the functional connection right the functional connection is that clear right so it is going to supply two glands that is submandibular ganglion subling submandibular ganglion will supply submandibular gland and sublingual gland 
then nasal gland pharyngeal gland palatine gland lacrimal gland through pterygo palatine ganglion so you want to include certainly this component what is the component general visceral efferent component yes okay now what about this seventh now definitely you would have come across right this as we are nearing lunch time right so you know that what is it a taste you get it so taste is through what now cauda tympanic branch of facial right don't forget it is through cauda tympanic branch of facial so you want to include a taste as a special or as a general component so it is special so special visceral afferent do you agree with me yes so that is done then look at this whether facial nerve has any sensory component or not yes it has a small sensory component right so it carries right pain and temperature from where right pain and temperature from external acoustic meatus right okay tympanic membrane external aspect okay and part of the behind the ear or behind the pinna right so that is pain and temperature i think this component is alone some of you would have missed right because facial nerve has a small sensory component carrying pain and temperature from the right ear right is that clear now it's going to we have seen right so facial nerve is a mixer now right so no second arch right in the pons right of course the right so special visceral efferent so what i told you superior salivary nucleus right and lacrimatory nucleus right superior salivary and lacrimatory right so superior salivary will supply the two glands that is submandibular ganglia submandibular gland and sublingual gland and minor salivary glands the lacrimatory nucleus will supply right the lacrimal gland ntvs is for taste and spinal nucleus basically is for pain and temperature from the right here yeah, that is tympanic membrane external acoustic meatus and part of the pin of the pain aspect right so that is what so it contains all this four components right okay look at this right so that is what is the facial nerve so all the components are right explained here right all the components are explained so don't forget what a tympanic is for the taste which is a special sensation and don't forget facial nerve has a small sensory component part of the tympanic membrane external acoustic meatus skin behind the pinna right and proprioception from the facial muscles whether i smile or not right etc right okay now so this is to show you the whole right okay different components are color coded we have the blue ones the green ones and uh, right okay i think uh, due to lack of time i'm not explaining the different color codes of this however these reference are from grace which you can always uh, look up right so i'll move on to the next now right vestibular cochlea so flash the question yes here is the question on your screen yes so i think this component doesn't this nerve doesn't need much time for them i don't i don't think uh, right they need sure. much time i think yes yeah. i think so, they would have completed by now yeah so i'll just share the results now yeah here are the results okay yes it's 75% yes okay now looking yes already how did we reach there so oh, it's a uh, Okay. Oh, look at the chart. This chart is very important. That's what I told you repeatedly again. So vestibular and cochlear nucleus. So only one component. You know that it is not right going to supply any muscle because first now, second now, and eighth now are purely sensory. You know that purely sensory. So you are not supposed to add any efferent column at all. So purely sensory now, vestibular and cochlear now, right for hearing and balance. Okay. So look at it. Only one component. that is special somatic afferent and purely sensory right okay so you see the right that is the cochlear now for uh, hearing right we have the ganglions right we have the ganglion here that is the spiral ganglion okay and this will be the vestibular ganglion or the scarpa's ganglion otherwise also called as scarpa's ganglion okay now uh, want the glossopharyngeal glossopharyngeal also is important okay that's the best question is here at your screen Okay, let's see. We'll give you thirty seconds time for this one. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. 
Yes. Are we getting the answers? Ten more seconds left. Yeah, I will share the today. results now. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Okay, 67%. Okay, it's quite a difficult one. Good for us. 67% polling. Yes. Let's see how does it go, right? So, yeah. Okay, now it is ninth now. Right, look at it. So wherever there is nine, definitely would have included that. Look at this, this is ninth now. So nucleus ambiguous, branchial. So what muscle it is going to supply? Only muscle, because always I used to think glossopharyngeal only one cranial now to supply only one muscle. But on probing, we found out what it has so many other components. Let's look at what is that. So glossopharyngeal now, what muscle does it supply? Stylopharyngeal muscle. So this component is definitely included. What glands and smooth muscle? Yes. Glossopharyngeal now connected to. Yes. Functionally connected to. Yes. So it is it is going to supply the parotid gland right through aortic ganglia. And so what nucleus? Again, it is salivatory, but what salivatory? Inferior salivatory nucleus. So parotid gland will supply, will be supplied, right? Then go to the facial visceral afferent. It is already there is number nine. So what about special sensation? Which part? Taste from where? Posterior one third of the tongue. Definitely is included. Taste. You agree? Yes. Then this component, I don't know if many of you would have included or not. Yes. That is from where? Yes. General visceral afferent from where? From carotid body and carotid sinus. The baroreceptors and chemoreceptor. This is important. This is one which you would have missed out. Right? It's applied to the carotid body and the carotid sinus. So both these components are included. Correct? Now, what about this one? General somatic afferent, right? Through spinal nucleus of trigeminal. Yes. So glossopharyngeal now love supply to the ear, pain and temperature from where? Tympanic membrane, inner aspect, external acoustic meatus, right? And right, one more. When you look at the posterior one third of the tongue, both general and special are by which now? Glossopharyngeal, exactly. So this component also is included. So do you agree? So that is what you see here. So it's a mixer now for containing all the five components, right? All the five components. That is nucleus ambiguous, inferior salivatory nucleus, NTS, spinal nucleus of trigeminal, right? Is that clear, right? Now, so these are the right components which have been explained here. So I told you, see that? It is going to supply the carotid body and carotid sinus, general visceral afferent, right? And gen and see that taste from posterior one third. This is taste. General sensation comes under general somatic afferent. Don't forget this, right? General somatic afferent. Okay, now. So this will be the right various components which are color coded and explained here. You see the parotid gland which is supplied to the inferior salivatory nucleus and the aortic ganglion. You see the blue component, right? And you see the green ones applying, right? The posture one third of the tongue, basically for the taste ones. Okay. So, and you see the carotid sinus and the carotid body, which is carrying the sensations, right? Okay. Now, now go on to the Vegas. I think you can flash the question. Yes. Yes. Here is the question. So it's almost similar to glossopharyngeal. If you have solved glossopharyngeal, right? Then definitely you can solve this. Ten more seconds left. Yes, I think if you've done glossopharyngeal well, definitely you would have you will get this also right, right? Uh, I so I will know. now share uh, the results. Yeah. Here it is. Okay, great, great for an eighty percent. Yes, eighty percent result. Well. That's great for Vegas now. Yes. Okay, because I know because of the time limitation, I'm going a little fast also, right? I put for this results. Let's see how we have done it. 
Okay. So it is not somatic efferent column. You know, it is like general. It is spatial visceral efferent column, branchial efferent. You see the ten year. What nucleus? Nucleus ambiguous. What muscle it supplies? It is going to supply the muscles of the pharynx, larynx. Right, one muscle of the tongue that is palatoglossus. Right, if you can remember very precisely. Right, okay. And look at this component. Do you agree this component or not? Right, glands and smooth muscles. Right, of the pharynx, larynx, and thoracic and abdominal viscera. Tenth now, I told you, dorsal nucleus of vagus. Definitely, you can include this. Then, what about this? Spatial visceral efferent and general visceral efferent. Spatial visceral efferent basically tastes from epiglottis, soft palate, postmost part of the tongue. Taste you can include. Agree. What about general visceral efferent? This is one which you need to think. Again, it is baroreceptor and chemoreceptor. Where aortic arch and aortic body, right? Aortic arch and aortic body. Don't forget this. Very important. Often asked this component. Aortic arch and aortic body. Right. What about this general somatic afferent pain in temperature? Right. Yes. From where? Auricular branch of vagus. You know what is it called? You know that? Yes. It is called as Alderman's nerve or Arnold's nerve. So it is going to supply pain in temperature from external acoustic meatus, the tympanic membrane, external aspect. Right. The concha. Right. Okay. The Alderman's nerve or Arnold's nerve. So that is through spinal nucleus of Trigeminal, so it includes all these five components, right? So hope you agree with me, right? So look at this. So it's a mixer now, right? Longest cranial now, right? Don't forget the question. Longest cranial now, containing all the five components, right? All the five components: nucleus ambiguous, dorsal nucleus of vagus, NTS. Why I told you why these two, and spinal nucleus of trigeminal, right? Okay, I have explained in this uh, slide everything, whatever, right? I told you, write the components. Uh, let's go on. Now, uh, this will be the whole course of the now supplying each color components or uh, right color coded for you to explain, which can be referred again from uh, South Asian South Asian edition, right? So, because of lack of time, I'm not going into the explanation part of this, right? Okay. Now, so accessory now. Yes, try to shoot the question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Here is the question on your screen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And here are the results. Okay, good. 68 percent. Now this is one component, one one cranial now, right? Which I want to explain. That is. Look at the, look at the thing, the table, right? Definitely, right? Eleventh round nucleus ambiguous is included because together with vagus, it is going to supply the muscles of the soft palate, right through pharyngeal plexus, and. Right, it has a part of the nuclear component in the spinal cord, which are not shown you here, which also supplies the sternocleidomastoid mastoid and trapezius. So it has branchial efferent column. So that is special visceral efferent. Right. So look at the thing here. Right. So two components: cranial component and a spinal component. Right. Medulla nucleus ambiguous, special visceral efferent, and in the spinal cord also I include that is to supply sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, right? So this will be the right the spinal component supplying. Here is the cranial component through vagus which is going to supply. Okay. Now want the last now, right? Want the last now, right? Try to shoot the question. Yes. Here is the question. Yes. We have about uh, 30 seconds okay. for this question. Yes. So I know it's a little difficult topic, right? Difficult topic. Okay. Try to be with me. Yes, I think you got the answer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So here are the results of this question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. One person. Let's look in how we have included, right? 
Okay, twelfth now, right? Twelfth now. Now it is going to supply the muscles of the tongue, right? Basically derived from the occipital myotomes, right? All muscles of the tongue. So it doesn't have all these components, right? All these components. So, so where is the nucleus located? So you know where it is located, right? That is in the. Okay, so. Sorry. Okay. So it also has a root for the C1, and times the somatic efferent column or general somatic efferent only. The nucleus is in the medulla. Right, so look at it. The nucleus in the medulla and the medial most nucleus, the medial most nucleus, right, which is going to right supply right the muscles of the tongue, right, the muscles of the tongue only. It does not have any other component. Is that clear? Okay. Right now, so look at the color coded only pink, right, to show only the muscular, right, the somatic efferent column, no other component it has, right. This will be the whole course, right, of the nerve. So when you look at as a whole, whole overall, you need to look at the principles are important. That is, motor nucleus are placed close to the midline, sensory nucleus are placed away from the midline. Suppose I put to you a question: the nucleus definitely not affected in median medullary syndrome, and suppose vestibular and cochlear nucleus was in the choice. So definitely you go for that because that is the lateral most component and it is more lateral. So without even knowing the sections, you can come to a conclusion based on whether it is a sensory nucleus or a motor nucleus, and come to a conclusion whether it will be medially placed or laterally placed. Okay, so if a person comes with a brainstem infarct, right? So whether it's a lateral brainstem infarct or a medial brain brainstem infarct, how do you come to a conclusion based on basically the right whether the presentation is more motor or sensory involvement? How, of course, an infarct, right, can extend. So which I don't deny. So basic, right, understanding and the principle of this is very important. See, I know it's a very difficult topic to cover in the limited time window, right? But however, the the video will be. definitely shared with you right definitely shared with you for right repeated view right i can see some 45 questions we have come across in the q and a right session right which will be very happy to answer right because of the time concerns right uh, i think i'll uh, request uh, shruti to limit to three questions right because all the participants are also waiting for the time right yes absolutely sir uh, so i mean this this session was of utmost importance and i believe considering that this is such an intense topic it required the explanation that uh, in the detail that you explained this particular topic now in the favor of time uh, we probably will just go through the three questions and rest of the questions we will get back to our um, attendees today through an email yeah. sir i will just post the first question Uh, yeah. The first question here is the functional component of olfactory nerve is SSA or SVA. Okay, so SSA or SVA. Okay, so that's quite interesting because it's a controversial thing. Okay, so most of the books, right? I go out with special somatic afferent, right? Few books say that it olfaction can be included under special visceral afferent, right? Optic is definitely definitely. special somatic afferent that is no doubt about it few books right suggest olfaction can be included under special visceral afferent however as per the susan standring grays right both the nerve that is olfactory and optic can be included under special somatic afferent even some cranial nerve specific books are non committal saying it general uh, generally as a sensory afferent Yeah, Shruti, we can go to the next question. Okay, great. Uh, so, sir, while I ask the second question, I would request all the attendees to post as many questions as possible in the Q and A tab so that they can get the answers to their question. The second question for today is, what are the functional components of cranial nerve thirteen and fourteen? Okay, so cranial nerve thirteen and fourteen. Okay, so what I told you about cranial nerve thirteen. So we need to. Go more into the details of cranial nerve thirteen and fourteen to understand the functional components. So I told you the topic of cranial nerve thirteen and fourteen to introduce you that there exist cranial nerve thirteen and fourteen. Okay. Now what is cranial nerve thirteen? I told you cranial nerve thirteen is nerve terminalis. Okay. Now this cranial nerve also is referred as cranial nerve zero. Right. They can ask you also as what is cranial nerve zero. Now. This cranial nerve is rostral to the olfactory nerve. That is why it was renamed as cranial nerve zero. Now, basically, these are filamentous fibers. To be more specific, these are filamentous fibers concerned with 
release of LHRH, luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone, right? Luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone. So I cannot put under right any of this component. Now go on to the cranial nerve 14. I told you. So what is the cranial nerve 14? I told you, which is nerve nerve intermediates or nerve Risberg, which we are including along with the facial nerve. So what component does it carry? Definitely, it is a sensory component. So which you want to include? So pain temperature from where? So it is so it is general somatic afferent. I can include that under general somatic afferent. So if you're more interested, you can write a lot of other work also is going on to know more about these nerves as this crane now zero and or the crane now 13 is more in lower animals they have identified and then in uh, red few filamentous fibers in human have also been published, right? So if you're interested, you can go through more in PubMed. Yes, we move on to the next question if time permits. Uh, so we just take one final question uh, before we end today's session and uh, the question is why is taste and smell a visceral components whereas vision and hearing somatic afferent yeah. the question is why is taste and smell a visceral component there is vision and hearing somatic afferent okay okay okay, okay. yeah because that is what i told you most of the books the first question whatever i told you the answer is applies to this that is the specialty books make it non committal as put it as sensory afferent okay whereas okay i tell you the taste is included as a visceral component okay because it goes to the nucleus tracta solitaris okay whereas olfaction uh, sorry optic and olfaction are purely not even considered as now because they're extensions of the brain so that is one of the explanation which uh, i found it because some say that okay they are extension of the brain you know the whole of the meninges covers the optic nerve Right, extending so extensions of the brain rather than considering it a separate component which makes it different from the all other nerves so that is one of the reason which can be right put forward okay, okay Shruti. yeah thank you very much uh, dr ravindranath i think this session has been very informative mm -hmm. as we speak we are getting a lot of uh, accolades for the session and people are uh, very happy to hear from you uh, yeah, uh, yes yeah, sorry yeah. Uh, because as it's related to crane now, I think definitely we have a lot of controversies and a lot of questions related to crane now. So please uh, uh, do post. So we'll try to uh, try to find answers. As we for speak, the... we already have 92 plus questions. Okay. So you have right. a lot of work to address too, sir. <laughs> I think before we conclude, I think we can put the two general uh, uh, questions also for them so that to get the feedback. Yes, absolutely. So there, there, are, uh, there are two feedback questions which I will now flash on your screen. And these questions, first one is here. So I would like everyone to answer this question. And the question is, if everyone has understood the, understood the concept today. Okay, and you can go to the right. I will just share the results. Share. Okay, because you can keep it so that you can discuss whether to host some more sections or not, Prithi. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I mean, uh, truth be told, the 96 was... Some of no. them were... Uh, so, so the response is thunderous. So, ninety-seven percent of uh, two thousand people who attended today have actually understood the concept in depth. So, which is a success considering we had very limited period of time with us. There is a post for uh, circulating as webinar headache, no? Throughout the head, right? <laughs> the skull. That is webinar headache. They would have heard about uh, frontal headache, occipital headache, and uh, if you ask me, certainly I'd be one among the four percent to host, right? I don't want the webinar headache. That's why I told you. Okay, come on, go to the next question. Next question is here. Uh, we just wanted to gauge the interest of our audiences whether they want to have such session in the future. Yeah. And I will. Yeah. Okay, I'll just share the results. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> this speaks for the success of uh, such webinars and master classes that 99% of our audiences uh, do want to come back to attend such sessions. Yes, and, rather, I would go around the 1% probably. I don't know whether it's my residents or not. They are tired with me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> because my residents and my students are also with me, you know. So probably they are among the 1% waiting for such a question. <laughs> oh, probably they have the privilege to hear from you directly in the classroom. So that's fine, <laughs> just to take it a lighter part. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, thank you very much, sir, for uh, uh, spending uh, this time with us and with all the attendees. And thank you very much to all the attendees who have taken out time today to, you know, uh, listen to us and be part of this masterclass. Sir, the, some final parting notes from you. Okay, sure. So that is the take-home message is 
this part if they wanted to choose you for the competitive exam definitely this area is untouched because since nowadays of try to place in this area because people don't read this because ideally we need an intern capsule or a corona radiata or corpus callosum and go out for a competitive examination and this area is one which cannot be mucked up when you try to understand more i request you to again see the video once more i know the second part we went through fast because of lack of time i know that i don't want to extend because already i heard from my professor i had a limited time window for to do this right i was wondering right how am i going to so i have exceeded right as he told the time limits right so so definitely go through this again so feel free to post your doubts in the email right i have shared my email with you so and all the best for you right thank you thank you very much sir the recorded version of this will be circulated to all attendees today with this i would like to end today's session thank you everyone for your time today with us thanks a lot bye